man, what's going on, man? It's your boy Hood, man. We'll holler at y'all right from the studio, man. Hood Films Studio, what's popping? Today I'm gonna holler at y'all about a new movie, man, that just dropped. It's called Black Ju no, Judah and the Black Messiah. Judah and the Black Messiah, man. Judas and the Black Messiah. Y'all need to check that movie out, man. It's on HBO Max right now. I don't know if y'all got that, but you check it out. It's a dope movie, man. It's really good. And uh, thank y'all for subscribing again. Thank y'all for watching. Continue to subscribe, continue to watch again. I appreciate y'all checking this out. I want to shout out one of my new subscribers. Uh, I'm doing shout outs for my new subscribers. So if you shout me out, if you're a subscriber, rather, I'm gonna randomly shout you out on the page, on the channel. So we'll see what's popping with that. So Patrick Alonzo, what's good? Thank you for being a subscriber and I appreciate you, bro. Welcome aboard. So, uh, what's going on with Judah and the Black Mas Judas and the Black Messiah? The funny thing about it is, I have a son named Judah. So it's crazy because I say the word all the time. It's my son, but this word is Judas with an S at the end, and it's about well, the word derives from one of the Jesus's black Jesus's twelve disciples, and one of these guys, this Judas guy, he's supposed to have betrayed Christ. Well, I didn't grow up in a, in a Christian religion, so I'm not going to try to explain all that because I really do not know the story. I grew up in an Islamic religion, and that's not in the stories. So you have to kind of do your own breakdown on what exactly that was, and maybe you could tell me in the comments section because I do want to know. So, uh, But I do remember somebody saying that Judas betrayed Christ or something like that. So why and how in, a, in the biblical times, I just don't know about that. But particularly in this movie, you got uh, Stansfield, the guy Stansfield, he is the boy who, he actually played in a couple of movies. He's been doing a lot of joints. He's a dope ass actor and shit. I forgot his first name, but he's he doing a lot of shit, Stansfield. And um, his, uh, and then you got Kaluuya, which is the main guy, Daniel Kaluuya. He's the main uh, actor in this plan, Fred Hampton. I'm from Chicago, so if you're from Chicago, and I was born in the 70s, so you hear about Fred Hampton your whole life. He's a legend. I met his son at one point in my life. And uh, they just legends in Chicago because they were fighting for justice. But in the movie, which was well shot, it was uh, directed by a guy named Shaka King. Uh, I think I've seen a picture of him at some point. Uh, I, I'm sure he's a dope director. He did a good job on this too as far as bringing the visuals together and telling the story and using the uh, platform, uh, the medium of filmmaking to tell the story. It really, it really did do a good job. And um, uh, I, liked, I liked the acting. I liked the storyline. I, I definitely liked the... Uh, uh, the producing of it, which is the uh, camera work, the directing, and all of the technical part. The costumes was flat because it definitely brought back the imagery of uh, the Black Panthers with the beret and everything like that. Uh, some of the stuff is kind of hard to swallow because especially being a person that grew up in that time frame, well, not that time frame, but after that time frame, I was born in the 70s, so I knew a lot about that. You know, it, it almost like when you see these stories played out, from a filmmaker perspective, it's almost like you gotta look at it and say, well, why would black people try to betray each other like this? Why can't you see that this is not good? You know what I mean? That you want to, but I guess they, and see, white people are ultimately the producers of these films. So you got Ryan Coogler who made Black Panther. He actually is a producer on this film too. But if you think about it, Black Panther also did the same kind of psychology that this script did, which is the American dude is a betrayer. The American black man isn't to be trusted. Like you know, for instance, uh, in Black Panther, in, in uh, uh, Black Panther, the American guy was um, trying to take all the stuff for himself and 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 then go up against white America with the powers that he can wield from our Black Panthers' uh, 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 stuff that they had back home. And so it's almost like the black man had a bad mentality because he was mixing African mentality and American mentality. And then you fast forward to this movie, which uh, Judas and the Black Messiah, it's the same thing. It's like he has a mentality of, let me look out for myself. Let me make sure I'm straight. I ain't going down. Like, I did some foul shit, but I'm not going down. So this whole organization, all these other black people that look like me, for whatever they fight for, fuck them. And that's what it happened. And so now, us as black people, we got to continue to stay in racism and continue to stay inside negativity or white supremacy all because of this one black guy that's what I don't like about the film because we know the ultimate enemy was the white man the ultimate enemy was the cops the ultimate enemy was the FBI but you keep trying to make it seem like in these films for instance the Harriet Tubman movie 
they tried to make it seem like a black man was chasing Harriet Tubman and trying to pull her back in slavery. How the fuck could that even be true when all black people were slaves? What black person would be running around with white men trying to put them in slavery when you know fucking well that that was 99% white men? Just tell the truth. Just play what the fuck it was. You know that white supremacy is coming from Caucasians. Quit trying to throw a black person in there and make it seem like it's something that they do it is continue on the perpetuation of white supremacy. In this movie, it, it, it kind of did that same thing. It's like this one black guy, if he wasn't involved, you never know what could have happened. Y'all could have been free. Y'all could have been safe. Y'all could have made it. And I'm telling you, that's something that has to do with our psychology. It's not necessarily the artist. It's not necessarily the script. It's us as a psychology because in the 70s when I was a kid, we all watched a show called Good Times. The, the concept was, uh, was a, a writer from a white man called Norman Lear. Uh, but the concept of the story, he's the producer, the concept of the story was of the good times was that black people couldn't get out of their problems. No matter what they did, it always ended up keeping them right back in the projects of Chicago. So that's kind of like a lot of the life that we live as blacks. No matter what we do, we always land right back under white supremacy. Look at Jay-Z, Michael Jordan, whoever, Michael Jackson. They go up to these large stages, these huge amounts of success and fame, but they all get brought back to, but you're still under white supremacy. You're still a black man in Chicago, kind of America. You still got to deal with that racism. And so these movies kind of perpetuate that. Like, yeah, black people could have been safe and there would have been a revolution and maybe the police would have left us alone until he gave that diagram of the house and then they just went in there and killed that black man. But it was his fault, because if he didn't give a diagram, if he didn't tell him where to go, they would have never killed him. It's not nothing to do with no one black motherfucker, man. This is a system that's set up and that's supposed to be destroying black people, keeping you poverty, keeping you poor, keeping you second class, keeping every other culture above you. And if you don't see these things, you'll let movies like this just glance right past you and just be like, oh yeah, yeah, man, it's just our fault, man. We are our own worst enemy. No, the enemy is the white motherfuckers. That little situation that that guy did, trying to give him, uh, yeah, it probably did cost him his life. Yeah, that probably did play out the way they said it was. But the Black Panthers didn't have nothing to do with stopping white supremacy around the motherfucking country. They didn't have nothing to do with stopping what the fuck has been going on for the last 30, 40 years. The fact that they had one guy that could thwart a whole organization inside the organization, and he was a black man as well. They did that with the Nation of Islam. They did that with the Black Panthers. Look at the storylines that they tell us in these movies. No matter what the storyline is, it always land you back under white supremacy. It always land you back under control of the white people. So are they really good stories? Are they really good movies? <coughs> when you can't be the hero in your own damn movie? Why do they think it's important to continue to put showcase movies that's not going to ever show us being a leader or a winner or a person that can overthrow white supremacy, that can stop the, the shit that has been going on in our cultures? When black people did do movies like these, white people started calling them black exploitation movies to give them a fucked up name. A name is something that you might not want to fucking look at again. Uh, you know, something like that. But even my movie, which I named myself, a hood movie, hood films, I named that. I own the trademark. It's my own company. Even still, my new movie, Killer Rapper, which is available free right here on this channel. You can watch it for free. It's dope. It's an hour long. I produced it, wrote it, directed it, all that stuff myself. Even my story, I have a story where the character at the end does that same kind of thought pattern. I'm not gonna give the story away. I want you to see it, but I but but it's it's sort of like how do you break that? How do you break that where we have a hero that's a hero like the white movies? Even though in my storyline, the script and in my opinion, it, it, it this is the only way we could have went because the story is written by me. It's, it's a creative story that I thought of on my own. But having a psychology coming from the good times, you're watching white supremacy, knowing about somebody like Fred Hampton. He was 21. It was a long time before I was 21. I was a little ass kid. So I looked up to somebody like him, learning about him in high school, learning about him and knowing that somebody that young could be a revolutionary. My parents used to always say, the Black Panthers was educated. They all had degrees. They all were smart. They came from universities. And then you sit back like, damn, for real? Then why would they kill if they came from universities? That's just the power of the white supremacy. So. 
I just didn't like that part of it where it always kind of seemed like the black person can't succeed in the back in the end of a movie or the thing that they working for. In white people movies, they save the fucking world. No matter what the fuck it is. It could be a bullshit movie about sharks. And at the end of the day, some white dude did something. He saved the world. He got the girl. That's what I'm trying to see in our films. Even with that movie they did, um, Slim, Slim or somebody, same thing. They get shot up, killed at the end of the movie. So it's like you don't have it. And that wasn't really a black power movie. But my point about it is that we have heard of these stories in a Black Panther culture. Where is the heroic stories that can show us a black man winning? That can show us a black man overthrowing, overcoming. Even if it's fictitious, who gives a fuck? It ain't real. We know that no black man has overcame or overthrown white supremacy, but it would be dope to see it in a movie because the movie is supposed to be not real. You know what I'm saying? So, and I know that they don't produce movies like this in, in their Hollywood. You know what I'm saying? Again, American actor for this movie has to be sick mental and then the black guy is an African actor Daniel Kaluuya he motherfucking throw, oh, throw oh, upright strong citizen um, got a mindset that's strong in his characterization but they have that character played by an African actor so it's almost like since Huey Pe since uh, Fred Hampton was more of a black power person he spoke up for the people he should be an African his person who depicts him should be an African because that's more what he was trying to seek for. He wanted to go back to Africa and be an African American, African person versus he didn't want to be disrespected here in America. And so then you got um, Kaluuya, who's just an American. He could be kind, he could be, he'll hurt somebody, he'll do some shit to make sure he gets straight. He ain't, he can't be trusted. You know what I'm saying? He'll turn on his own. You know, is that in our culture? Is that what we do? Is that a large amount of us? Or is that just a fucking thing that happened in this individual situation? It also happened with Nat Turner. The Nat Turner movie showed the same thing. A black dude was sitting back saying, okay, I'm finna tell him this motherfucker. And then he went right and told. And so it's like, what, what is that? Then those kind of movies, it perpetuated negative thought about us as blacks. It's almost like some kind of bullshit Tyler Perry storyline because it's like, why can't we be powerful? Why can't we be people who overcome? Why do we have to die? And then you got to say, he died for years. It's like, I just don't know, man. I, I don't like that shit. It, it, even though when we, the movie is good, the story is good, the fucking film is good, you're going to love it. It's, it's well shot. It's well produced. Everything about it, you're going to love the movie. It, it, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, uh, they did a good job creating uh, the idea of what it was to be in the 60s, what it was to be back then. He, he had his wife, he had a love interest, and then they also stayed together and had a baby. I remember hearing about this, because they used to show in Chicago, they used to show the news reenactments of this, like the house, I think there was a, it was a white house and they shot up, it was bullet wounds on the outside of the house, all over the house and, and I remember just seeing it on the news as a kid. And you'd be like, be, tonight we're talking about Fred Hampton. What happened that night? And it would be some news special. And so that's how you would get further information on it. You know what I'm saying? So, but I don't, I think Kaluuya, he did a good job. I don't like always seeing that, that this whole new thing of using African actors to play the main characters in movies that should be African American. I'm not really down with that so hard. I know that the dude can act, and I know he did a good job in it, but it's just a lot of guys who could have played Fred Hampton that's American and actually understand that struggle. But that, again, is a new hustle in filmmaking. They're not letting uh, mostly American guys be the lead. They have to have a, a African, they have to have an African, being from London, Britain, something like that, but they're not gonna necessarily be American. And that's just a trend that's been going on for the last 10 years or seven years, so it's what it is. So y'all let me know in the comment section what y'all think about that movie. If you thought it was good, if you thought it was whack, if you think Kaluuya did a good job, if you think the other guy had a better job, what you think about the storyline, you know what I'm saying? Uh, he was a snitch, so I, it's not like you're going to have fun watching it. It's, it's hard seeing a snitch squirm, and, you know, it's not, it's a snitch movie. But it's good. And, you know, before I go, I want to talk about Mario Van Peoples did the same movie back in the 90s. I think it was like 97. His movie was called Black Panther, I think. It was something like, well, Panther, I think it was just called Panther, uh, back then, in the, in the, back in the 90s. And um, his movie, uh, Mario Van Peoples, he uh, had Kadeem Hardison play uh, the snitch in the movie who worked for the white guy, and he was snitching to him about what was going on in the black community. So they literally have told this story before. 
You know what I'm saying? And maybe it's true, because again, I wasn't even born back then, so I, I'm watching TV like, that's what the fuck y'all say happened, that's what it is. So it's almost like, you wonder, did it, you know, was it some hero situations that happened? You know, they had Jeff Ford in the movie, which I assume was Jeff Ford, which he went to go see some kind of uh, leader of a gang. And I think in Chicago at that time, it had to probably be Jeff Ford. I'm assuming, I do not know. And uh, cause that's before my time. So I'm thinking that that was what that, what that guy was when he met with the gang leader. And obviously they just changed the names for a movie. But uh, you know, he was basically telling him like, yo, if you're gonna be over here at our spot, you know, we, we want a certain level of respect from him. But it was still able to see that them bonding and coming together, which they probably did in real life as a Panther. So, and my mentor, he, uh, in filmmaking, I know y'all don't know that because he's passed on right now. His name is Ron Pitts. This, you can look him up. He's a filmmaker from Chicago. He actually was the first person to ever be allowed to film the Black Panthers. His name was Ron Pitts. He's a filmmaker, cinematographer from Chicago. He was my mentor in the filmmaking. His name is Ron Pitts, P-I-T-T-S. He's my mentor. He's a way older gentleman than I was. In my 20s, when I was in my 20s, I think he was in his 60s. So he, uh, I met him at Columbia College Chicago as a filmmaker, and uh, we got cool, and he always talked about his movie. His movie went viral, but it's not, it would be considered viral today. But at that time, his movie was the only footage known in of the Black Panthers, and he, they allowed him to follow them around because they didn't have no filmmakers on deck. So he, in Chicago, he allowed, they allowed him, Ron Pitts, the filmmaker back before we was even born, to follow him. And his footage became the quintessential footage that went around the world about the Black Panthers. And that's why the world know who the Black Panthers are because of his footage, because they didn't allow people in their sections. They didn't allow news and all that in, but they allowed Ron Pitts to come in. And he used a black and white Bolex camera, which, uh, no, that was, that's not one that I got over there, but it's, it's, it's similar to that one, but that's what he used to shoot him. He told me this because I talked to him directly and uh, I obviously seen his film uh, and, um, it's about the Black Panthers. He did the first footage of the Panthers back in the 60s, and that was the footage that went around the world to news and everything else about the Black Panthers that actually made them famous, which ultimately made him famous as a filmmaker, and he ended up landing a gig at the, uh, he told me, being the Bull Bears, being the Bears filmmaker for mad years. He said he did that to like 79 or something like that from the 60s back then to like 1980-something. 79, something like that. That's what he told me. And he's gone on now. Rest in peace, Ron Pitts. But I'm going to show, shout out my mentors in the filmmaking game. And since this movie is out, you can look him up, Ron Pitts. I don't know if his stuff is on YouTube. I can look it up right now. But I, I don't know if it's on YouTube. Because remember, he was he was an old man and he's passed on by now. So it would have had to have been his kids to put it up there. You know what I'm saying? But I don't know if that's what he did. I'm, look, I'm looking at it right now just to be on the safe side before I tell y'all to Google it. And it's not on there, but I, it should be on Google though, because this is this really did happen. That's his life. No, nope. Because Black Panther is so big, and with the movie coming out, if he was on there, it's not on. It's not on YouTube. But I'm gonna check it out on uh, Google real quick, because uh, that would be dope to see if uh, I know he existed, but uh, his film, whatever happened to that, I I don't know. But since this movie is out now when in 97 there was no internet like that so i couldn't google his his stuff so here he is right here see ron pitts 1933 and he died in 2013 was an american filmmaker who gained prominence leader of the black parents chapter the lord thing 1970 so that was it a film depicting the chicago gang as a he did that he did that also uh so he brian pitts this y'all need to check out my uh, mentor ron pitts man he made the, uh, he is most notable for having broken a color barrier in Chicago's film industry, becoming the first black filmmaker to be hired by the NFL. See what, see what I was telling y'all? This, this is my mentor. This is what he told me about his life. I'm reading it on the internet now, but I didn't even know this was, so it's, it goes on about his life, about how he did commercials for United Airlines, Kentucky Fried Kent Chicken, Chicken, and Jemima, and, and it goes on, but you can look him up. Uh, on the internet, his name is Ron Pitts. He made the first documentary about the Black Panthers, and um, it says it right here. He gained his prominence through the civil rights movement in the uh, '60s or '70s. Yep. So that that's that's what he told me, and I saw his film back when I was a kid. 
Yeah, I did so I'll see it. I'm see if, if I see his film, uh, if they list the name of his film. The American Revolution, Chicago Pioneer. Uh, I don't see his, uh, but his film is going to be on there. If y'all ever check out Ron Pitts, man, he tell you more about the, uh, well, he did now, but his film will tell you more about what he did about the Black Panthers, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, yeah, it was dope, man. I'll never forget that guy, man, because he was my mentor and he helped me. He helped me uh, 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 do a lot. Of, he was actually doing speeches and stuff with, uh, 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 I'm just reading further down on YouTube with uh, Bobby, what's that dude's name again? He's a, he's a, uh, well, I don't see it, Bobby Lee, but I don't know who that is. I thought they was mentioned in another person's name. But anyway, go see that movie, HBO Max, Black Jude, now I think it's uh, Judas and the Black Messiah. And I think we covered a whole bunch of stuff, man. We talked about my buddy uh, Ron Pitts. We talked about Mario Van Peoples' version of the movie. We talked about the acting, the clothing, the cinematography. We got it We got it in on the movie. And I wanted to get it in on this movie because, again, knowing Ron Pitts when I was a kid, I was really young at that time. I think I was like 22 in 23 and uh he uh just was a cool older person and he was not afraid of showing me filmmaking telling me how to deal with the racism they come inside of chicago filmmaking and blah 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 and it made me a stronger artist so that being said i'm about to jump off of here and i appreciate y'all watching thank y'all for chance standing with me all the way to the end of this video i'm grateful for you if you did definitely leave a comment like subscribe hit the bell button and if you're a new subscriber definitely subscribe and i'm gonna give a shout out a random shout out to my new subscriber that i see on this page in a minute so thank y'all for watching and i'll holler at y'all in a minute